it is not a secret that mass migration is going to continue uh, to uh, to escalate as climate change makes its effects felt disproportionately on the global south, as uh, the conditions that governments like the United States have set up in the global south uh, make its effects even more acutely felt in terms of our consistent interference in the region, toppling of governments, and of course the effects of uh, em emboldening organized crime due to our war on drugs and our militarized borders. But you're seeing this in Italy. I mean, Georgia uh, Maloney is uh, basically saying, hey, migrants, it's my policy to allow you to drown in the, in the sea. Um, the... the, the uh, I believe it's the Swedish far right that's also gaining some ground. That the, there is um, a significant coalescence both in Europe and in the United States around border militancy and uh, otherizing and basically, you know, allowing for the deaths of at this current moment migrants, uh, if not causing them. And then there's the potentiality for just wide-scale systemic violence against migrants. I think that's the new frontier of fascism. What's what's your assessment of that? Yeah, I mean, I think that is um, likely the, the key uh, battleground and the key phenomenon that we're seeing. It's, of course, been significant for a long time to fascist um, thought and practice, but it's, of course, being ratcheted up in, in um, really uh, preoccupying and also in, in some ways um, unpredictable ways by uh, climate collapse and by all of the imperialist politics that are exacerbating it, right? The great replacement um, myth um, and, uh, and, and kind of obsession is one that has a very long uh, history, uh, some of which I touch on briefly in the book. Uh, Mussolini himself was a um, uh, proponent of, of such. Uh, there were all sorts of fascist and Nazi adjacent demogra demographers, right, who viewed the collapse of ancient Greece and ancient Rome as having to do with, you know, a drop in natality and, you know, the, the invasion of other ethnicities, etc. So there is this whole, right, imaginary of decline. Um, and uh, and that also took place, and I think that's carried through for a hundred years, right? In the 1920s, the obsession of a lot of the same thinkers, uh, the same figures who are talking about great replacement, is this idea of the of the rise of the darker nations, right? Uh, Oswald Spengler called it, you know, the, the world revolution of color, right, or the the rising tide of color. Um, and so I think that's uh, that's remained, and you know, and it's. It's not novel, right? I mean, there was recently a piece, now I can't recall the, the author, um, but showing how that infamous novel, The Camp of the Saints, written by uh, Jean Raspail in the 1970s, French author, was super popular amongst, you know, like the Reagan right, right? Already in the 1980s, right? So we've, we've been um, accompanied by this, you know, very morbid phenomenon for a while, but I think you're right that materially, uh, speaking, this is something that's becoming ever more, um, uh, uh, ever more prominent, right? Uh, there's a very good book about this by uh, uh, Brendan O'Connor, Blood, Re Blood Red Lines, about this, you know, exactly how this phenomenon of what he calls border fascism has been percolating in the U.S. and, and serving, right, to synthesize and to cohere otherwise disparate bits of the far right and even of the kind of mainstream right um well it's all the hallmarks that you describe it is the out group it is the preserving of the purity of the united states uh an imagined past uh mm -hmm. one that is described in ways that are not necessarily uh in in concert with reality but and, and one that relies on returning to something through exclusion um, and it's not just, of course, the United States, it's yeah. other countries. Too. And it can also take place, which is, um, which is worth uh, reminding ourselves of, right? It can also take place by expanding a far-right anti-migrant coalition beyond the domain of, you know, white ethnics or whatever you want to call it, right? Like this is, uh, I was watching rather 
astounded after a friend who was there um, told me about it, an acquaintance who was there told me about it, the speech by the um, Salvadorian president, Bukele at CPAC, right? You know, and there you have, you know, which was kind of stunning, right? Like on the one level, like you you have the, the star of this uh, uh, xenophobic uh, party, right? Being a uh, Central American uh, president, mm -hmm. but who was very much, you know, right? Uh, uh, supporting a kind of, um, you know, close the border, great replacement narrative, more or less, you know, presenting himself as the the great ally, right? Um, uh, engaging in uh, hypersecurity policies inside, stopping this kind of flow of migrants, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's the, the other thing that we have to keep in mind, right, is um, that this is not a phenomenon that simply manifests itself in a monolithic way, right, as, as white supremacy, nor could it, electorally speaking, in the United States, right, for instance. And so I think the incorporation and interpolation of, um, uh, of people of color into the far right within this context, right, is also significant. You're also seeing this, you know, in, in different ways. And, in the United Kingdom, right, where you have the so-called most diverse <laughs> government in its history proposing the most uh, abjectly regressive policies, including the uh, infamous, you know, Rwanda deportation scheme, which apparently now is being also touted by Ursula von der Leyen and the, um, the uh, right wing of the European Parliament, right? Uh, as usual, uh, as uh, centrists uh, do it by saying, well, you know, this is a way we're going to stem the rise of the far right by, of course, anticipating the most draconian and racist policies. By doing what they like. By yeah. doing what they like, but then obviously doing what they like, but not doing it with the same kind of gusto or, mm -hmm. or enjoyment and therefore leading people to think, well, if that's what we're doing, we might as well have it, you know, with the with the fanfare and the rhetoric, right? Rather than- in Biden's doing of, the same thing here in the yeah. United States, trying to yeah. expand Title 42 and do all of these Trump era border militancy proposals and framing it as a compromise with the Republicans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's it's nonsensical. Um, but anyway, I, I really appreciate your time today, Alberto Toscano. Apologies for making you define fascism over and over when your book is explicitly against that kind of proclivity. Um, no worries, no worries. It's a good exercise anyhow. But it is, I think, helpful for people to tease out and, and to challenge some of their maybe previously previous conceived notions of what fascism constitutes. Uh, the book is called Late Fascism, Race, Capitalism, and the Politics of Crisis. We will put a link to your book in the description, uh, wherever people are listening to or watching this and at majority.fm. Thanks so much. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much, Emma. Cheers.